Moving to a new country can be quite overwhelming, especially when you don't know the next step to take as soon as you arrive the city that you have just moved to, or you don't even know anyone in the city that you have just moved to. So in today's video, I'll be taking you through the important things that you need to sort out as soon as you arrive Mujo. So if this video interests you, keep watching. Hey besties, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. I love you so much. And if you're new to this channel, you are very much welcome. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for useful information and tips. And also click on the post notification bell so that you'll be the first to get notified as soon as I post a new video. My name is Christy Ozumba. And on this channel, I share useful information and tips about my life and experience as an international student who studied in Mujo and currently lives and works in Mujo. As you can tell from the title of today's video, I'll be talking about the essential things that you need to do as soon as you arrive Mujo. Let's get right into it. In order for this video to be organized, I have itemized a few things on my list that I'll be talking about and I will start from the things that you need to do at the airport and walk my way down to things that you need to do in Mujo as soon as you land Mujo. So the number one thing on my list is for you to print your study permit at the airport. Whichever airport that is your first point of contact into Canada, that is where your study permit would be issued. Whether Vancouver, Toronto, or any other airport, your study permit will be issued there. And the documents you would require to get your study permit would be your admission letter, and um, your visa and some airports would some visa officers at the airport would require for proof of fund so you might want to have have that in hand just in case in my own case i didn't have to um, show any proof of fund because i wasn't um, it wasn't required at vancouver airport where i landed so if that is i mean it, but it's just something to have in hand just so that you're not taking on our way and on your study permit when you're being given your study permit it is important to check that the important information that you need to enable you get a job in Canada or in Mujo or anywhere in Canada as an international student is actually um, stated on your study permit. If you're a co-op student, you want to also make sure that that is also captured in your study permit. Um, I'm going to read out how mine is. I didn't do co-op, I did a one-year program and um, I'm just going to read out from my study permit what it says. It's going to be the um num item number three on the conditions of your study under the conditions of your study permit number three may accept employment on or off campus if meeting eligibility criteria as per r186 f in bracket must cease working if no longer meeting these criteria you must make sure that your study permit has this clause included if you're also a co-op student, like students who will be going for a one-year co-op um, during the, the period of their studies, you want to also make sure that it is captured in your study permit. Otherwise, what this means is that if you get into Mujo without these conditions on your offer letter, it is either you will not be able to work or as a co-op student, you will not be able to get co-op. And this will require you to go back to the border where this would be issued. And that's an extra cost. So you want to avoid that from beginning. And the number two on my list is one, as soon as you touch down Mojo, the first thing you should do is to get your SIN, which is your social insurance number. It's a nine digit number that is like your identity. That is your identity actually in Canada. You get this from the Service Canada. It's somewhere around Main Street. If I can, I'll put the addresses below this video. But your SIN is the first and most important thing you should get because without that, you don't exist to the Canadian government in Canada. So you need this as an identity. And for your SIN, it is important to know that it is your duty to protect your SIN. 
you should not in any way or form disclose your sin to anybody. The only places where you should disclose your sin is at the bank or at any government institution physically and also your employer if you have gotten the job. If you have not gotten the job, please do not give your sin to anyone because if anyone uses your sin to commit any crime, it's on you because like I said, this is your identity. So you have to be careful on how you keep this document or, or you, you keep the document or you disclose your SIN number. The documents that will be required from you at the Service Canada to issue you the nine digit number, which is called the SIN, social insurance number, is your study permit and your international passport. And they'll probably ask you for a temporary address or an address that you're you're currently living it doesn't have to be a permanent address you can use any address at the time and later update it by the time you get an accommodation this is if you haven't gotten an accommodation and the next thing you should do is to go to the bank to get a bank account of course you cannot be carrying cash around or sometimes um your ATM card from your home country may limit you in terms of what you want to do. So you want to open a bank account. And at the bank, you will be required um, to give them your SIN number, your study permit, and a proof of address. It could be a temporary um, proof of address. It could just be the address of the Airbnb where you're staying. Now, in Canada, it is, um, it is not very um, common to walk into the bank and just get an account open more often than not you would have to book an appointment and come on the day of the appointment to open the account so but in the in the event that you're able to walk into a bank and do that then congrats to you but make sure that you go to the bank as soon as you arrive to book the earliest appointment date so that you can get your bank um, account set up and running and then the next thing so when you after opening an account i think you should request you should actually request that the bank prints a proof of address for you especially when you are just in a temporary accommodation the bank will give you a proof of address they'll print a print out a proof of address for you this proof of address would be one of the documents you would require to go to SGI, Saskatchewan Government Insurance. This is where you get your local or Saskatchewan ID because for everywhere you go to, they would require you to give them a form of identification and you cannot be carrying your passport around. You require your local identity card which is issued as the SGI, the Social, um, Saskatchewan Government Insurance. And at this um, Saskatchewan Government Insurance, SGI, you'd be required two proof of address. Now, your SIM can serve as one, and the proof of address printed at the bank can serve as one. And they'll issue, this, um, they'll issue a temporary card for you and send that card to the temporary address that you have indicated by the time it's printed. I think they will tell you it will be about two weeks. I'm not sure how many business days, but within that, before that period, before the, before, within that um, time frame they have given you, you will definitely get your SGI. So um, you want to also constantly check the mailbox of the address that you have listed in, um, or you have given to SGI to ensure that you don't miss out on getting your card. By the time you're done with the SGI, you should be heading to get a phone number. Now, most people get phone number at the airport, which is their first point of contact into Canada. While that is not bad, I wouldn't advise if that city is not your final destination. If your final destination is Moose Jaw, I would advise that you hold off on getting a phone number until you come to Moose Jaw because you get so many offers, so many benefits um, because you because you you are a Moose Jaw because you are a SATS Polytech student. You know so many of so many telecom company partners with um, SATS Poly to give you a student discount. And if you are getting this outside of Mujo, you may not be able to access 
um, this full benefit. So it is important that you come to Mojo and you also get the Mojo area code. Um, so for every cities in Canada, they have their area code. So as Mojo, Mojo has an area code that will be assigned to you. And there are so many good deals. And I would advise that you get a contract line. Never you do pay as you go because that is more expensive. Do a contract, get a contract line from any of the um, communication telecommunication um, providers like Saxtel, Bell, um, I think Virgin. I think this companies have good deals for international students living in Mojo and schooling with Saspoli. And when you get there, it is also good for you to specify that you would want to be able to call the US for free so that they can include that in the juicy deals that they'll be giving to you. And I think Virgin offers this thing that you would have 200 hours, um, 200 minutes to call your home country. So these are all the questions that you want to ask as soon as you get to any of the service provider and ensure that you get the best deal. Don't be shy to ask any questions. Don't be shy to make um, to make your own offer. Like ask, can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get this? Compare prices. Like here, you always need to ask questions. You always need to be able to talk and you know say your mind the highest they will say is no this is not possible or it may be above your budget but ensure to ask and for those people i've seen people who have asked me do you think i should buy a phone in nigeria or buy a phone in canada i really cannot answer that question explicitly to say buy a phone in nigeria or buy a phone in canada it really depends on what you what you want but here if you come to Mujo, one thing that i know is common is like during the black friday there's a lot of deals so like a phone that will be going for a one $1 say an iphone 15 pro that is the latest in the market as at now i'll be going for over a thousand dollars during the black friday sale you would maximize the discount for being an international student um for the black friday and also a sats polytech to a sats polytech student to get this deal to get this phone as if at a very very good deal sometimes the phone goes as low as 600 or 500 dollar for the phone and the plan so the the paying for the phone itself and the plan means your internet and the call that the calls that you'll be making with those numbers so it really depends on what you want and how much you can spend as soon as you arrive most job given that also when you go to any of these service providers it's not like you're paying the money like if you get a contract line you're not paying as soon as the number is being issued to you it's going to be a one month billing cycle so one month from the day you get that number is the day they are going to send you your bill so basically you pay this bill monthly i think for side sale they have a deal for students for as low as 50 dollars and sometimes you can even get the phone and the plan for as low as $65. So it depends on what promo is available at the time. But most times you get the most juicy deals for phone and plan during sales, like during the Black Friday um, sales. The next thing you also want to do, if you're coming with kids or you're a single person too that don't mind, there's something called food bank. Food bank is a place where people who cannot really afford to buy a lot of food items or grocery shopping for themselves and their family go to for help. So it's a government assisted, um, it's a non-governmental, I think it's a non-governmental assisted program. I'm not sure, but yes, you want to also go to the food bank to register. I'll link the address, I'll put the address of the food, Mujo Food Bank um, below. So if you go to the Mujo Food Bank, you'd be required to give them your Saskatchewan ID and your lease agreement. These are the two things that you need to register with the Mojo Food Bank. And then you would see the days for which you can be coming to collect um, groceries or food items that you would need. These things come in handy, especially when you're coming in with kids and you need to do a lot of shopping. Um, the food bank can go a long way in helping you um, with a lot of the groceries you'll be needing around the house. Next thing on my list would be for you to go to 
the newcomer center. The newcomer center is a center where um, they have people set up by the government or is a place set up by the government to assist the newcomers whether international student permanent resident so long as you're a newcomer in canada they assist you with information that you need in settling down so the things that you'll be doing or they would be, they'll be helping you out with at the newcomer center would be to help you register for your health card um you would need a health card as long as you are in Canada just in case you fall sick and the rest of them if you don't have a health card you literally pay out of pocket and you don't want to do that so they'll help you to register for your health card I cannot specifically tell you what documents or remember what documents that you'll be needing at the newcomer center but just carry all your documents from your offer letter your admission letter your 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 scene your your study permits and every documents that are, are important um or that brought you to canada just to take those documents along to the newcomer center so they'll be assisting you with your health card and they'll also as they'll give you a tax a tax form to fill and also um, ask you to post it using the post office that is just beside the office so in case they forget to give you this form please request for it because if you don't you may not be getting the there's there's some money that government pay to 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 individuals that um i think is the carbon rebate i'm not sure exactly but the carbon rebate is part of it if you don't have those sorted out you may not be receiving that money when others would be getting um, such money paid into their account or such check sent to them via their post post so ensure that you fill this form and take it to the post office just beside the new cover center to post it to the address that would be given um, to you and also they would help you to optimize your resume to and tailor it to the kind of job that you may um, want to apply to and they will also set you up to be able to print your resume i think there's a limit i'm not sure exactly but you you would be able to print a certain number of resumes every week so they will also set you up create an account for you and you know give you other information that you need if you also don't have a house they can be a lead they can give you a lead to any house that is or anybody that is um renting their apartment or any apartment that is up for rent they can give you a lead to a lot of things to job so it is also important that you visit the new comma center i really cannot emphasize this a lot if you're in musjo and you haven't gone to the um, musjo new comma center then i'm not sure you should be asking yourself if you've done all the important documentation that needed to be done because those are this this is a place where um it's like a one-stop office for a lot of documentation and the next thing would be to get a house if you've not started, if you've not gotten a house go to facebook marketplace ensure that you you view the house before you pay don't pay for any house that you haven't viewed and get a lease agreement sign a lease agreement because you'll be needing your lease agreement for a lot of things that you need to do in canada and if you're a SATS police student and by the time you get into Mojo, you realize that you don't know, you no longer like the course that you are coming to study or you want to switch cities, the first thing to do is to go to the international office and let them know your desire to change your course or to change the location or the campus maybe you are in prince albert you want to come to musjo or you're in musjo you want to go to regina well however switch you want to make just proceed to the international um, office and you meet the international student advisors who will let you know the possibilities of doing these things because we all know that not everyone who has applied for visa would get their visa approved so for people who wouldn't get their visa approved, their seat will be vacant. So if you're lucky to be in one of those courses where they have vacant or you're, you happen to be wishing to be in one of those courses where they have vacant seats as a result of people not getting their visa or wanting or the other stopping them from coming into Musho, then the international student advisors would let you know the possibility of you switching into such program or also um, switching the city 
of study or the campus of study. I think that would be all for this video. If you have anything that you need me, if you have any question or anything that you need me to talk about, please put the question in the comment section below and I'll make a video on it as soon as I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. Bye.